Oh yeah, what's going on? I'm Ethan, your Real Life English Fluency Coach, and in today's lesson, we're going to look at one of the best ways to improve your English vocabulary. And that, of course, is through reading, all right? So we're going to look at a bunch of different books that go from intermediate to advanced level and cover all sorts of genres. So pretty much anyone who's watching this will be able to find something that you're really going to love. Now we won't be looking at any children's books because I don't tend to recommend these to English learners as they'll have kind of strange, obscure vocabulary, which isn't so practical for your actual English use. So we'll get right into the list, but quickly before we do, I wanna let you know that if you are new here, every single week we help you to understand fast speaking natives without getting lost, without missing the jokes, and without subtitles. Just like our fan Sitar, who says that our lessons are the best thing that he's found for improving his English vocabulary. So we'll help you to reach your English learning goals too. It's really simple. Join over 3 million learners from around the world by hitting that subscribe button and the bell down below and you won't miss a single one of our new lessons. Alright, so the first one that we're going to look at is an American classic. I actually had to read it when I was in high school and I have to tell you it was one of my favorite reading assignments during that time. Now this one is more advanced. It's actually satirical, like many of Vonnegut's books, and that basically means that it uses humor in order to criticize. Now, it's about some of the atrocities during World War II, and it takes into account some of Vonnegut's own personal experience in that war. And it also ties in some aspects of science fiction, like aliens and time travel. And because of the satirical nature of this book, I actually found myself laughing out loud during certain moments, which is kind of a way that he breaks some of the deeper parts of this book. Now, it has some more controversial language in it, which actually got it banned in some schools and libraries when it first came out, but now it's considered an American classic that many people like me will actually read while they're in high school. So I highly recommend that you either check out Slaughterhouse-Five or any other book by this legendary American author. So the first one we looked at was an American classic, and this one that you've probably heard of is a British classic. Now this is really great for intermediate learners because it includes novels and short stories. And short stories, because they're shorter, if you're actually trying to kind of like study it and learn from it, then you'll find this much more accessible than something that's really long. And what's great about a mystery like this one is that it will keep you curious to find out what is the solution to the mystery that they're trying to solve. So you'll be wanting to keep reading even late into the night. Now, a really great way that you could learn with this would even be combining it by watching the incredible series from the BBC starring Benedict Cumberbatch. And you could watch that at the same time or maybe after you finish the books. So I highly recommend that you check this out. Sorry, which was it, Afghanistan or Iraq? All right, so our next one is another more advanced book. Now, this one is a fictional story that takes place in Afghanistan. And when I read it, the USA was actually at war in Afghanistan, and I found it really interesting to learn some aspects of that culture, especially because it was in contrast to what was being said in the media a lot. Now, this is a book about friendship, betrayal, and redemption. And it includes some really graphic and powerful scenes, so it's definitely not for the faint of heart. But if you're looking for a book that will have a big impact on you, then I highly recommend that you give this one a read. All right, if you're like me, maybe you don't have a lot of time to sit down and read. So a really great solution for this is actually listening to audiobooks. I love doing this every morning while I'm making my breakfast and kind of getting ready for the day. And it's a really convenient way to kill two birds with one stone. Especially for you as an English learner, you can actually listen to the audiobook and read at the same time. And this would be a way that you can not only improve your vocabulary and your reading, but also improve your listening and your pronunciation. And another exercise I highly recommend to my students is actually recording yourself reading and then listening back to it and comparing it to the original. It's gonna be a really great way to get some speaking practice in as well. So you can try any of these books on today's list as audiobooks absolutely free with Audible. By clicking the link down in the description below, you'll actually be able to get a free 30-day trial and two audiobooks for free. So I highly recommend that you try that out because this can be a super convenient way to improve your English listening and your reading. 
All right, so our next one is definitely advanced, and I was split whether or not to actually include something from this author. But the reason that I did is because Shakespeare had such a huge impact on English as it's spoken today. In fact, he invented over 1,700 words that are still used in modern English. Now, as I said, this is very difficult to read, even for natives, but it's really for any of you who love literature and you really wanna see English at its highest expression of use. Now, of course, this won't be so practical vocabulary for your everyday English speaking, but of course, a lot of the other books in this list will be more along those lines. Now, the reason that I chose Romeo and Juliet for this list is because you probably already know the story, and that's gonna help you a lot in your understanding of it. Now, a hack that you could do, sort of a little trick that even natives will do when they're studying this in school, is to buy the No Fear version. Now, basically what this is, it's the original play, but on one page, it'll have the original text, and then on the next page, it will have kind of a translation to more modern English. So this can be a really great way that you can kind of see this beautiful use of the language and then directly understand it through a more clear explanation in modern English that you're learning. Or another thing that you could do if you really want to just challenge yourself with that original text is just buy the cliff notes, which kind of give you the academic explanations of what different things mean so that you can read and then you can kind of take those to really see if you're understanding everything that you read. Finally, after you finish reading, you could go ahead and watch the famous film starring Leonardo DiCaprio. All right, let's take a look at another advanced one that's going to give you another view of English used in a really beautiful way. You know, probably the highest expression of any language can really be through poetry. And a really great thing about it is that poems can be really short. They can be even just a few phrases, but you can spend hours reflecting on them. So one thing I might recommend to you if you like poetry is just try reading one poem in English per day. Now the reason I chose this one is because Maya Angelou is revered as one of the best American poets. Actually her poem, I Know Why the Cage Bird Sings, made a huge impact on me when I had to study it in high school. A free bird leaps on the back of the wind and floats downstream till the currents end. And dips his wings in the orange sun rays and dare to claim the sky. But a bird that stalks down his narrow cage can seldom see through his bars of rage. His wings are clipped and his feet are tied, so he opens his throat to sing. The free bird thinks of another breeze. And the trade winds soft through the sighing trees. And the fat worms waiting on the dawn bright lawn, and he names the sky his own. But a cage bird stands on the grave of dreams, and his shadow shouts on a nightmare scream. His wings are clipped and his feet are tied, so he opens his throat to sing. The caged bird sings with a fearful trill of things unknown, but longed for still. And his tune is heard on the distant hill, for the caged bird sings of freedom. Now the history of African Americans in the country is really truly fascinating, but it's something that not many learners are actually in touch with or even aware of, kind of a darker part of American history. So Maya Angelou's writing is a really great way to kind of get some insight into this. All right, so let's move over to something a little bit lighter. Now this intermediate book, I actually just read this year and it's absolutely hilarious. So it mixes aspects of humor and self-development in a fictional story. So it's a story about a poor young boy who grows up to become a rich and successful businessman in rising Asia, which basically just means that it's some city in Asia within an economy that is quickly developing. Now, I actually was laughing out loud at times reading this one, guys. So I really think that you'll enjoy it. It's a quick read and it's really great if you enjoy reading books about self-development, but want something that's a bit lighter that you could even read before bed. And if you do enjoy self-development books, then I highly recommend that you check out this lesson I recently made, giving you six books that will change your English and your life. So you can find that by clicking up here or down in the description below. All right, so next on our list, we have another intermediate read. I actually listened to the audiobook of this, which is really wonderfully narrated on a trip to Brazil, and it made it fly by. Now, this is a young adult book, technically, but I highly recommended it to all of my students because Neil Gaiman is just such a beautiful writer. So I think that any adult really could enjoy this captivating story. 
Now, it's about a boy whose family is murdered, and he somehow ends up in a graveyard where the ghosts who live there raise him. So we kind of see his adventures growing up in this graveyard. So it's light, it's enjoyable, and you'll learn some really great vocabulary. So if you love books about adventure, then I highly recommend that you give this one a read or a listen. And another way that you can really take your English vocabulary to the next level, which is obviously going to also help you to read some of your favorite books, is with our free three-part masterclass. So I highly recommend that you check that out. You're going to have a ton of fun. You can learn more and sign up by clicking up here or down in the description below. All right, so this is another advanced one. And it's actually the only book on this that is not actually a native English book, but it has a really great translation. Now it's from Brazilian author Paulo Coelho, and it's on this list because it could really make a huge impact on you. And also I recommend it because it was the first ever book that I read in Portuguese. Now it's about a man who goes on a journey searching for a treasure, but really the real treasure are the lessons that he learns along the way. Now, another book that I almost added to this list, but I didn't include because it's quite similar to this, is called Siddhartha. So it's another really great read because it includes a lot of great lessons for your life. So I highly recommend that you pick up and read either of these if you want something that you're not only going to highly enjoy reading, but they can also help you to change your life. All right, we are down to the last two, which may or may not surprise you. So the second to last one is Harry Potter. Now, many of you I know will have already read this, but it could be really great for you to reread it again in English. Now, depending on which book you pick up, these could be from intermediate to advanced. And as I said, they're really great for language learners. This was actually the first book that I read in Spanish and German. Uh, I've heard that you learned uh, basically how to speak English from Harry Potter. Is that correct or? Yes, okay. uh, my uncle taught me to read and to speak at the same time with the Harry Potter books. So does that mean that maybe some of your first English that you could speak was spell-based? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I was such an annoying child. I, like, God bless my parents. It means that I was either casting spells continuously or using very annoying words. Like, I was such a precocious, annoying little kid. It's like, Mommy, I clean the dishes meticulously, you know, that kind of thing. <laughs> Now, young adult book series like this are really fantastic because the author tends to develop them as the audience does, which means that kind of as you go on reading, the first couple of books you might find really easy, but then as you go on, they become more and more difficult. So if you're right now at an intermediate level and you start with the first book, kind of as you're going by reading more and more books, your English will be progressing as you get further in the story and they become more difficult. And something really great you could do is actually combine reading the books with watching the movies. So a great place for you to start is actually with this recent lesson that Andrea made, where she teaches you with the first book, which is called Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone, if you read it in the USA, or Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone, if you read it in the UK. So you can check that out by clicking up here or down in the description below. But if you've already read Harry Potter and you wanna read something similar, but new instead, then I highly recommend the series called The Tales of the Atori. Now, I absolutely love Japanese culture. I grew up watching anime and playing Nintendo games. And this one takes place in feudal Japan, but it's a fictional story. So I highly recommend that you check that one out as well if you want another really great series that might remind you a little bit of Harry Potter because it's also coming of age. But that is not the last book series on this list. The last one is actually Hunger Games. So this one is number one, and it's an intermediate read. The reason that I placed it before Harry Potter is actually because I find it a bit more accessible. It's only three books instead of seven, and I think that it's a really easy and fast read. Now, as always when learning English, the most important thing is to keep it fun, and this is definitely true of The Hunger Games. It's actually the only book that I personally have ever read in less than 24 hours. I remember I was reading it at night, and I looked over the clock and it was already 3 a.m., and I was almost finished with it, and I just kept on going. So as I mentioned, this one is a quick read. You can learn so much from it, and we also have a lesson with the movies if you want to learn with that as well. All right, I hope you really enjoyed today's list. Now quickly before you go, I wanna just give you a couple of tips that will help you with your reading. 
So first off, I recommend that you always choose books that are aligned with what you already love reading in your native language. In fact, you could choose a book that you've already read in your native language and read the translation of it in English. Now this is really great because it's easier to understand when you already know the story. Now, if you want some more tips on how to improve your reading, then all you have to do is give this video a like to let me know and I will create that video for you. And if there's any books that you think that I missed or that you absolutely loved reading in English, then comment that down below so you can help other learners from around the world who love reading just as much as you do to discover their next great book. Now it's time to go beyond the classroom and live your English. Aw yeah. All right, so the first book that we looked at was The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. Now, how do you actually even build a good habit or break a bad one? Well, journalist Charles Duhigg got really curious about all these questions and dug into all the science of it, bringing us a book that brings us some down-to-earth stories that help us learn all about how we can replace our bad habits with really good ones. 